Hi, I'm Tony Van Veen, CEO of Dismakers. I've spoken in the past about the fact that the music biz is a tough business. It's hard to make it. However, it is possible to have a long and productive career as a musician. Many artists are able to make it work. But how exactly? What do they do to make it? That, my friend, is the weighty topic of this week's video. Today, I will give you my 29 tips for success and longevity in the music business. Now, I want to start by saying that there's not one single path to making a living in music. There are many ways, and in a way, every artist's journey is different. The list I'm going to give you is by no means the only way, nor is it exhaustive. But it does include common sense advice gained from my experience and the experience of others that will greatly increase your odds as an active, performing musician to make a living from your music, to help you achieve a, shall we call it, traditional music career of artist success. First, a couple of quick caveats. If you don't, can't, or won't perform live, quite a bit of this advice won't apply to you. If you want to make a living just as a songwriter, much of this won't apply to you. If you want to pursue a full-time career as a computer programmer, maybe, and do music as a side gig, much of this won't apply to you. However, whatever your musical goals, a number of these tips will help you get closer to your goals faster. Mainly, if you are interested in building a successful artist career, this is 100% for you. So, without further ado, here are my 29 tips for survival and longevity in the music business. Number one, treat this like a job. If you are serious about making it in the music biz, whatever making it means to you, then you have to spend the necessary hours on it. You have to make time for it, real time, after your day job. If you treat your music like a hobby, it will always be one. Number two, Prepare to play the long game. For most artists, music success takes years, and you'll need a plan to make this journey financially sustainable. For this music thing to work for you, and for you to have a shot at success, you need to generate income to live, to survive, and pay the bills, and to record and tour and keep your music career progressing on an upward trajectory. Until that time when you can actually make a living from your music, that most probably involves a day job of some sort along with your musical activities. Number three, like it or not, you need to invest money before you get to make it. Think about this. When a new company launches, they typically invest lots of money up front, renting space, hiring people, buying inventory, spending on ad campaigns before they start seeing revenue, and certainly well before they start seeing profits. It's not too different with your music career. You need to invest as well in instruments, recording, manufacturing, merch, a bunch of other things before you see income. You'll need funding to do that, hence my previous point about having a plan and a source of income to financially support your career early on. You just won't make money on every album, every concert, every single thing you try. Initially, this will require more money going in than you'll see coming out. And this phase, I got news for you, it could last for several years. Number four, you have to realize there's a lot of competition out there for the fans' attention. Lots of other songs being released every day. Lots of concerts to go to. In order to rise above the noise, your music can't just be good. It can't just be very good. It has to be great. Your performances have to be great, which means you're probably not spending enough time building your musical skills, better musicianship, better compositions, better live performances. Number five, because of what I just said about all the competition, it really helps to find a way, or several ways, musically, visually, performance-wise, some other angle, to stand apart from the crowd, to help you break through the noise. Your amazing voice and guitar playing alone may not be enough to make you jump out. If you're just a young, talented, good-looking pop singer, it's really difficult to break through unless you have some unique angle to make you stand apart. 
Number six, you must realize you are in business. Specifically, you are in the business of building a fan base. In fact, you are not just in business, you are the business. Just making great music is not enough. Like it or not, you're going to have to do work you might not otherwise want to do, like being active on social media, learning marketing, and interacting with fans at concerts. Remember, if you're going to make a living from your music, it's your fans who are going to pay to make this possible. Number seven, gaining fans involves hand-to-hand -hand combat. Yes, we live in an age of social media, but fans have to be won over frequently one by one with an interaction at the merch table, a comment on a social post, a smile and a wink from stage. The occasional social post or new track on Spotify isn't enough to build a loyal fan base. It takes real work over and over and over again. It certainly helps you if you actually enjoy this part of it and if you're a nice person. Number eight, everything starts locally. Not just that, but since you'll likely have to do multiple cycles of touring and you'll come through the same city every year, local bookers, promoters, DJs, and other operators remain important to your success much longer than you think they are. When you start out, you have no option other than to start small and local and do so proudly. Love your local fans and make them love you, starting in bars and clubs in and around town. Engage with them in person, outside the venue after your set, to build fans for life who will spread the word about you to others. Number nine, build a network. Networking has become almost a dirty word lately, but a network can really help move your career forward. You can do it authentically. Become friends and make connections in your local scene with other artists, with promoters, DJs, and the like. Then do so in other towns where you perform. Take the contact info of the people you met. Reach out with a quick thank you or was great to meet you text or email. Over time, this is how introductions and referrals happen that can actually move your career forward. Number 10, be professional. Specifically, be on time. I can't overstate how important this is. Be polite. Be nice. I don't really need to explain why, right? Number 11. Don't take the assholes personally. Some people will be jerks. If you have to deal with them, get over it. Don't take it personally. Remember, you may not like them, but if you need them now or later, you've got to figure out how to work with them. If you don't need them, ignore them. If you can't do that, figure out what makes them tick what they need, and then, as best as possible, try to give that to them. Not everyone you meet in life and in business is going to be nice. That doesn't mean you can't do business together. And remember, sometimes that rough exterior is just a front, and underneath that exterior is a solid, hardworking person who's under a lot of pressure to perform. Number 12, you must release music regularly. In today's crowded music space, fans, especially new or casual ones, will forget about you if you don't release music on an ongoing basis. Just dropping an album every year or two doesn't cut it in today's music business. You need to drop singles every month or six weeks plus an album every year. It can include a couple of the singles you release. Each release builds upon the previous one, gradually growing your fan base and your streams. Number 13. The road to success means literally hitting the road and performing live extensively. If you're not prepared to gig all the time, if you don't enjoy performing, then maybe your music career is not for you. It's at your performances that your fans get to interact with you. Heck, in the early stages of your music career, it's at performances opening up for larger bands that potential fans can learn about you and become your fans. You have to do this constantly. The goal is, every year, a bigger venue. That's how you gradually build a sustainable music career. Number 14, make awesome physical products. Fans love the connection with the artist that they get from owning a piece of physical product. A CD, a vinyl album, a t-shirt, a hoodie. Plus, selling merch is a critical part of your financial survival as an artist. You can't make a living from streaming, so you need to sell stuff, merch and concert tickets to pay the bills. 
And ideally, your merch, your CDs, your shirts, etc., are so well designed, so creative, so cool, that fans will covet them, that they just have to have them once they see them. Okay, so far I talked a lot about the hard work that goes into building a sustainable music career. So my next step, my next tip, number 15, is this. Enjoy the ride. Don't focus so much on the destination, your end goal, that you ignore the journey. Making music, performing, meeting fans and people in the biz, playing bigger venues every year, they're amazing experiences. Enjoy them, have fun, and feel free to stop and pinch yourself every once in a while that you're fortunate enough to be able to do music. Whatever level you ultimately end up at with your music, if you love what you're doing, the journey will have been worth it. Number 16, rehearse, rehearse, rehearse. Believe it or not, you're not rehearsing enough, no matter how much you do rehearse. Believe it or not, you're actually not as good as people say you are. Let's be honest. The people around you, your crew, your fans, they won't tell you the hard truth. They just tell you that they love you. And in fact, they may love you, but that doesn't mean your music is good enough for you to live off of it. Look, baseball slugger Mike Trout knows how to hit a baseball but he's still in the batting cage every day taking batting practice. Why? To keep getting better, no matter how good he is. To keep upping his performance, you need to do the same. Practice like crazy, and whatever level you're at, work on getting better. Number 17, concerts are not just for the ears. If you get on stage knowing how to perform your songs really well, it's not enough. Music fans are not there to hear your music. They can do that on Spotify in their bedroom. No, your fans are there to see, to experience a show that will inspire them. You have to actually plan and practice your whole live set over and over again to give them that show. Practice how to engage with the audience during and between songs, your stage banter. Practice the interplay with your fellow band members. There's so much work that you can do to optimize. Your goal at every gig should be to blow the headliners away. And when you are the headliner, you should want to blow your fans' minds. And here are two quick tips. Number one, if you're an up-and-coming act, the audience probably won't know you. So when you're on stage, tell them your name, your band's name. Tell them a couple of times during the set. And number two, remind them to buy your merch at the merch table. If you sell a few CDs, that's gas money for the van. Number 18, you need a funnel. Remember. This game is first about creating awareness and getting people to notice you. Then it's about getting them to remember you. And finally, it's about getting them to give you money. That may sound crass, but if you aspire to making a living off your music, you're gonna have to get paid at some point and you need a funnel to do this. Awareness creation starts with songs on streaming platforms and videos on YouTube and, of course, with performing and opening up for other artists. Next, you want people to subscribe to your YouTube channel and follow you on Spotify. You want to get them to your social media and follow you there on Insta and TikTok and even Facebook. And ultimately, you want to get them onto your email list. Yes, old-fashioned email. No matter what you think of email, it's a great tool to retain mindshare with your fans and the single best tool to monetize your music. When you have a new single or album or piece of merch, email will drive dollars. One of the things I tell artists is social for show, email for dough. And as I've mentioned already, ultimately, you've got to generate enough income from your music to live off. Number 19, as you're doing your funnel building and your career building, you need to watch the metrics. How many followers do you have? How many subscribers? Streams, views, merch sales at gigs, ticket sales. And how are they progressing? Are they growing? At what rate? Did you do an email campaign? What was your open rate? your click-through rate. Hey, this is a business. You are the business. You need to deal with numbers at some point. Number 20, try things, experiment, mix it up. Get creative and see what works best. Try different price points at which to sell CDs at concerts to see what maximizes your revenue. 
Of course, for my previous point, you have to measure the results. Try a name your own price program for your CDs. Try different subject lines for your emails and see which get a higher open rate. Try performing a cover song live and see the audience response. Maximizing your performance and your results comes from trying new things. Marketers do this all the time. They call it testing. You can do this too. In fact, you should. And you can have fun with it. Don't be afraid to try some weird things. Who knows? It might work. Number 21. Related to my last points, celebrate the win. Take time to enjoy that sold out show. Take a selfie from the stage with the audience in the background. When you hit that next milestone, take a minute to relish the feeling of getting that win. It will really re-energize you. And number 22, then when you get knocked down, get back up. Success in the music business is frequently two steps forward, one step back. You're going to run into headwinds. Just as I talked about celebrating the wins, you have to learn from your failures. You will play to the occasional empty venue. You will make mistakes. That's okay. You're in it for the long haul. When you get down, pick yourself up, dust yourself off, take a deep breath, figure out what went wrong, and take the next step forward. And, of course, don't make that mistake again. Number 23, be open to advice and feedback, but know what to ignore. Over time, you'll get lots of feedback and advice from booking agents, DJs, a and reps, from fans, from your mom. Be open to the feedback. Take constructive feedback to heart, but figure out what advice and feedback to ignore. You need to know what you're about. Have your true north and do things you want to do in the way that is right for you. If you get a poor review from Pitchfork, first look for legit opportunities for improvement, then ignore the criticism and keep doing what you're doing. You need thick skin in this business. It's hard when your creations, your songs get trashed by others, which means you need to keep striving to do better, but get comfortable tuning out the negativity and advice that's not right for you. Number 24, okay, here's a biggie that many artists are afraid to deal with. Don't tolerate bandmates or others on your team who are toxic. It's hard enough trying to make it in the biz when everyone's getting along. Climbing this ladder takes all the energy you've got. You don't need anyone draining that energy with their negativity, especially not someone in the band. Look, you're still early in your career. Believe me, your talented singer or guitarist isn't talented enough for you to tolerate their poison. You can afford to replace them and you'll be just fine. Trust me on this. I've seen it time and time again in music and in business. Plus, you'll feel so much better once you've replaced that toxic, toxic part of your team. Number 25, you'll need to do most of it yourself, particularly early on. Recording, releasing, promoting, booking, driving the van. Remember, no one's got more at stake in this whole thing than you. You know your goals, you know your direction, and you don't want to delegate that too soon. You don't want to give up control too soon. Plus, you need to keep your costs low. This will take a lot of work on your part and your bandmates if you're in a band. You don't want to attract management too early, but you do need someone trustworthy to manage your merch booth. And if there's one outside expert you will need, it's a lawyer. Because trust me, you don't want to try to interpret any contract, certainly not label contracts, all by yourself. Number 26, there are no guarantees, period. Success is not guaranteed. No one owes you anything. Someone else who started around the same time as you may be way ahead of you. Maybe they were more talented or had a more unique angle or worked harder or were nicer or were more punctual or were just plain luckier than you. That doesn't matter. Of all the artists who make music, very few reach the top of the charts. That doesn't mean you're a failure if you don't make it. There's only one number one, but it is another reason to make sure that you enjoy the journey while you're on it. Which leads me to number 27. You define what success is. No one else can tell you what your goals are 
or what you should achieve. Yes, by all means, get inspired by others, but there's no one definition of success. For some, it may be playing arena shows. For others, it may be playing in a wedding band on weekends and working on originals during the week. There's no right or wrong to your goals. Stretch goals are important to motivate you, but make them attainable. Have milestones. It's important to be realistic with your goals. If you play some obscure niche music genre, it's highly unlikely you'll be packing large venues. If you set yourself lofty, unattainable goals, it's easy to get discouraged and drop out because you see yourself as a failure. Even though within your genre, you might be doing great. Which leads me to my next tip, number 28. Don't give up too soon. I've seen it on a number of occasions where an artist throws in the towel, calls it quits, just as it seems like they might start to be getting lift off. This is why it's important to watch the metrics. Yes, the grind in the music business is real. It's constant, it's nonstop, it's tiring. But if you're seeing growth in subscribers, in streams, in followers, in concert attendance, keep going. You never know where to lead. And 29, for my last tip, you've got to ask for what you want. This is an important piece of advice, not just in music, but in life. If you want your fans to buy your merch, ask them when you're on stage. If you'd like to co-write with another songwriter you respect, ask them. If you want something from your bandmates or producer or booking agent, ask. Be polite, of course, always, but ask. Other people can't read your mind. If you ask for what you want, you will end up getting it much more often than if you don't. It's actually a known part of negotiating tactics, and by the way, in music, almost everything is a negotiation, that in negotiations, people leave the most opportunity on the table by just not asking for enough. So make that ask, it might just work. Okay, I'm gonna roll here. So I'm going to actually give you one bonus tip, and it's perhaps the most important one if you want to have a long, satisfying music career. Number 30, be true to yourself. If you want to last in music, you have to make the kind of music you feel. It doesn't matter what the genre is, reggaeton or free jazz, grindcore or R&B. The music's got to be you, and you've got to be the music. If you go chasing commercial trends, hoping for success, and trying to play stuff that's not really you, there's a small chance it could work financially, but how long would you be able to sustain that? How fulfilled would you be creating and playing music that's not really what you are? And let's be honest, would you even be able to create the best music you possibly could if you're just chasing financial goals? No. If you want to do music for the long haul, you've got to be true to yourself and play what you want. What you feel. Okay, so there you have my 29 tips plus a bonus 30 for survival, success, and longevity in the music business. I'm sure there's 29 more tips and then another 29 after that, but these are, I think, the most important ones. Now, before I wrap this video, remember, you're doing this because you love making music and you love how making music makes you feel. Sometimes, while we're in the grind, we lose track of what we love doing. We may even forget that we're supposed to love doing this, and that's a terrible thing. As musicians, we are so fortunate to have our music, our creativity to express ourselves. Most of the world, the non-musicians, have no idea how that feels, but you do, and that's a reward in itself. I hope you found these tips helpful. Do you have advice and tips to add? Please write them in the comments below. Let's all learn from each other. I read every single one. I respond to many of them. Thank you for watching. I'll see you next time.